All right, everyone, it's time to start off today with a topic that's not exactly political. Don't worry, we'll get into politics later, including on the exclusives. Links in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to follow me at least on Rumble and BitChute because you're getting a couple of extra videos a day, uh, by the way, that you don't get on YouTube. Sometimes I get a little bit too spicy for that particular platform. It's very, very sad. Children on the Internet, my final word on this particular subject. I wanted to win because I'm a father. Uh, I, I have a two-year-old daughter. And I happen to make my money on the internet. I write and edit books. Links in the description of my books, blogs. <laughs> Fill me up, dudes. I make videos. I make streams. Um, I, I do commentary, running commentary on Twitter and things like that. It's enjoyable. It's lucrative. It's how I make my living. I'm self-employed as a content creator in various endeavors, and that's where the bacon comes from. That's how you put bread on the table. It's also enjoyable. Um, I didn't set out originally on the internet to actually become well-known or to make money off of it. It was just a hobby at first. It uh, was transmogrified into more of that, partially through serendipity, partially through my particular skill set, and, and partially out of necessity, economic necessity, many years ago that I've talked about before. Yeah, I was not raised, uh, I was not raised in the middle class. I was raised on the lower end of the working class. That means you're a couple paychecks away from homelessness, uh, potentially. It became a problem. And so I am very positive towards the Internet. My experience has been overwhelmingly positive. Most of the relationships that I've been in in my life started online. My money comes from the online world. The fact that people know who I am is because I have an Internet footprint. Uh, so people randomly show up and buy Bill Tong from Antons and say, Hey, a stick sent me. I saw him on your... Uh, uh, this on your show, and I thought I'd try it out, and stuff like that. It's fun. Um, it, it's very, very entertaining. It's very, very rewarding. I like it. But as far as getting your kids online, none of you even know my daughter's name. You've never seen a picture or a video of my daughter. Some content creators habitually put their kids on their shows, and it's cute. It's adorable. Oh, look at little Jimmy. You know, he's rolling around on the floor, you know, bothering Dad during his stream. Or little Sally, you know, she, she gives her mom a flower when she's doing her makeup tutorial. It's cute, it, admittedly, it's adorable. But I see that as a threat uh, on multiple levels. And this is why I think small children should not really be associated, unless you have just a family-oriented, family-friendly, this is our life, haha, -ha, look at us at the zoo brand. If you're doing especially commentary like I do, politics, um, that puts a target on your back, potentially, you know, you can get swatted, you can get doxxed, and all these things. Somebody shows up with a butcher's knife and an erection at your front door. It doesn't really make sense to make your child part of that brand. That's number one. Number two, it kind of violates the, um, the non-aggression principle, the NAP, in my opinion. I say this as a classical liberal who believes in that basic premise. My daughter is not old enough to know, for example, this is, this is my anecdote, to to understand the potential dangers of the internet. Yeah, they can be overblown by the soccer mom crowd and used as a source of censorship, but there are threats on the internet. There are predators on the internet. There are scams and spam and all sorts of things like that, viruses and all that shit. If your child is not old enough to cognate that concept and not old enough to really choose whether they want to be well-known online or known at all online, so having their picture, their videos, their name, etc. out there, then they shouldn't be. I see it as a violation of their individual rights. So I have no right to put my daughter on my show. Cat, yeah, a cat can be on the show, by choice usually. Flummox up onto my lap and start purring and stuff and showing their ass on camera. But my daughter uh, is not old enough to understand the risks and rewards of establishing yourself online, is not capable of, of enjoying it in the sense of like, like any conscious enjoyment, like, hey, I like to be on the internet and can't even verbalize yes or no, I want to be on a video with you. And so until she's much older, uh, she's not going to be online at all. And any net usage will be heavily monitored. And thankfully, I'm tech literate in that department. Phones, uh, you know, wait till you're 18 to get one of those. Because phones are a waste of time anyway. Yeah, you need one in this modern world, but you know, you don't need it that much. Uh, until you're old enough to uh, have a bank account anyway, uh, you don't really need it for anything. You want to watch videos? Okay, you can come and watch videos. I'm sitting right next to you for a reason. Because I understand the dangers of the internet. Again, they can be overblown. Your kid's probably not going to get taken away by a grooming trafficker, but there is that risk. And so I see bringing your small children, or even, even teens uh, to an extent, 
uh, on board your show until they're older and can verbalize whether they want to do that or not, then it's a no-go zone. And even then, you still have to be aware of the risks, the rewards. Uh, you got to understand the Internet's forever. And so you might, for example, a yeah, 14-year-old kid or something uh, wants to make TikTok videos or something, keeping in mind that the opinions that you express when you're 14 could be drastically different when you're 24. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I was sheltered from the internet until I was already effectively an adult. I didn't have home internet access till I was 19. The only reason I got that is I was going to college, so when I'm home, uh, I, I still need to be able to do things online. I don't want to have to transit to the library to use a public computer all the time, and of course I might be doing something, there's a personal information like uh, phone numbers and so I don't want to be in public doing that either. And so it became necessary. I wasn't even really into the internet, honestly, until I was already an adult. I, it wasn't until my junior year of high school that I really got into anything, and then it was just downloading music on LimeWire. By the way, statute of limitations on those copyright uh, claims uh, ended long ago. And movies and stuff like that. And I had a home computer, but it didn't have internet. But I could watch movies and listen to music and stuff, and that was pretty cool. Um, but, but I was sheltered from that. My first experiences on the internet were trolling chat rooms when I was like in elementary school at the uh, public library. And then there's the porn issue. Uh, it is there. It was easy to find even as a kid. I mean, you couldn't search on the computer for certain things, but if you were searching for Pokemon, you'd be led into the world of anime. And from anime, you'd get to hentai, or hentai, I don't know how it's pronounced. And from there, you'd find other content uh, as well, and it was profuse. Uh, the 2000s internet was much more Wild West than the internet of today. It was literally everywhere. It was fully searchable and, and quite explicit. Didn't fuck me up, but it could have. Uh, it could have been psychologically damaging to me. While I'm not anti-porn, uh, kids don't need to be exposed to it. I mean, I mean if, if you can take steps to prevent that from happening, it would make sense to do so. There are risks online. The biggest risk, though, is that as a dumb kid, you put opinions out there, make a brand for yourself, you're, you're well known, and then you, you, you change and you're forever stuck with that original sort of brand. If you want to become a content creator, it's possible my daughter will. Maybe she does want to be a YouTuber or a TikToker or something. That's fine. Stabilize yourself first, understand kind of what you're going with and what you want, and then capitalize upon it later. You know, you're still a teen, you got plenty of time. I didn't really hit the, uh, the, the waves until my mid-twenties. Uh, that's the first time that I was sort of well-known. What was I originally well-known for? I was Botany 101. I was making videos about drugs and stuff like that and psychedelic experiences and doing the hippy trippy thing. That was the first time that I got attention. Well, how my brand has changed these days, although I still am interested in psychotropics, I don't use them myself, disclaimer, uh, but I'm interested in learning about them from the herbalist standpoint. The things change over time. If I had become a content creator when I was 16 or something, I would have been giving out mainly liberal opinions. My, my opinions would have been more Obama than Ron Paul. Later on, I drastically changed politically because I was confronted with undeniable evidence that the liberal mindset was wrong and that the liberal politicians were disingenuous, but you would, you would know me as a, as a latent liberal, potentially. And I could have gotten locked into that simply by having made my mark at the time, and even when confronted with that information, I'm like, wow, I'm going to alienate my audience and I'm making money. Could be a problem. I think that uh, content creation should generally be adults. It should not be kids. I don't believe in keeping kids off the internet, to be clear. They're going to find a way onto it anyway. But in my child's case, I shelter her from that because she doesn't need to be known to anyone. She's two. Some people parade their babies around and take monumental numbers of pictures of them and everything else. And I just see it as, as disgraceful, honestly. Now, I realize if somebody's got a family-friendly thing going on, they got like a 12-year-old kid, and they're occasionally on a video, they're doing makeup or something. Okay, that's one thing. That's fine. And it's the parent is monitoring, and it's mainly their account and stuff. That's fine. But if you're doing commentary of the kind that I do and some of you do, uh, yeah, I'd say that's probably a bad idea. So, yeah, well, that's my thought about children on the Internet. Um, parents need to be more involved with net usage. It will be necessary. They're going to have to experience the Internet. But you can safeguard it, um, and parents need to do it. Don't rely on the schools to do it. Don't rely on government regulation. The fact that the government has passed a law keeping your kid off a of site is not going to keep them off the of site. Only you can do that. That's about all. Peace out.